Hello everybody and welcome back to the Amazon Bedrock series. In our last video, we covered a simple AI chatbot that used the Amazon Bedrock API to access a variety of LLMs like the Claude Sonnet model. In this video, we'll be implementing a RAG pipeline, which includes loading, splitting, embedding, and storage into a vector database to allow us to do similarity searches to kind of chat with our data. If you use tools like Langchain, the code can get a little bit hard to debug since you're doing all these imports and you still have to kind of have an underlying knowledge of how the embeddings process is working in the RAG pipeline. Tools like Amazon Bedrock are basically no code versions of a RAG pipeline where you get fully managed support for the end to end workflow. So no need to code anything. You just link it up to your data source and you're off to the races. They handle the entire pipeline for you. One of the main use cases for using AWS Bedrock is that it already integrates really well into existing serverless architectures, particularly on the AWS platform. So Toyota is using petabytes of data from hundreds of sensors and millions of vehicles, and then ingesting that into a data lake architecture where there's ingestion, decoding, and transforming using a variety of AWS services. So AWS Bedrock could fit somewhere here in the analysis portion where you can take your data and ask the LLM to summarize insights on that data. In this blog post by AWS, they do a case study on Lonely Planet, which is a generative AI travel itinerary service. And they personally chose it for the security that you get from AWS Bedrock as well as the ability to swap foundational models really easily. Okay, to get started, go to your AWS console and go to Amazon Bedrock. You'll need to ensure that the region you've chosen is going to match the region that your model has access in. So if you go down to model access, you'll be able to see all the models that you have access to. And you can see that I already have access to a bunch of Amazon models as well as some, as some cloud models. So if you wanna change which models you have access to, just hit manage model access click the ones that you want access to and hit next and get approved. It usually only takes a couple of minutes. Okay, so first we're gonna navigate to knowledge bases on the left-hand side here, and then you'll get a form like this and you can go ahead and create knowledge base. Now you'll get a form that looks like this and you can go ahead and create a new service role for this, use a default base name, and then we're gonna choose our data source. So you'll see there's a couple options here for using S3 as well as other data sources from third parties, or you can even use a web crawler to extract information from a public web page. For this video, we'll just use the Amazon S3 bucket that I've populated with a couple of PDFs. So now we get this page where we can use the default data source name again, and then we'll choose the S3 bucket that we created and I've just set it to public so that we don't get any permissions errors. Okay, so now we're gonna get an option to select our embeddings model. So here we'll just use the Titan text embeddings v2 model, which I got model access for in the previous page. And then I can also set the vector dimensions, which I'll just use the default for. And you can see on the bottom there that the vector database, I'm just using the quick create method, which creates an Amazon open search serverless vector store. And just remember to delete this after you're done as it can incur some costs. Or if you click the other option on the right hand side there, you can use services like Pinecone or MongoDB for your vector database. Okay, now we'll take another second to review all of our details and everything looks good. So we'll go down and create our knowledge base. This should take a couple minutes to complete. So I'll check back in when this is done. All right, so once you see this green pop-up, you'll know that your knowledge base was successfully created. And if you have any issues with this, I'll leave some troubleshooting steps towards the end of the video. But now that this is working, we can go to data sources and simply click the PDF that I uploaded and then click sync. You'll see this pop up that it's syncing and then just let it load for a couple of seconds. All right, so now that our data source has been synced, we should see this chat pop up on the right hand side where you can click select model. If you don't see it, then there should be a little blue icon on the right hand side. So now we'll just use the Titan text G1 model uh, but you can use any model from this list here. And once that LLM has been applied there, you can test out with a simple query to summarize the PDF. This is going to call the retrieve and generate method, which basically does a similarity search and then passes the results from that search into the LLM. So you can see here that we got a response from the LLM and it even has these citations in blue, which are 
um, actual snippets from the PDF that we provided. If you go to show source details, you can see the five chunks that it used to supply this response. And by default, it's five, but you can modify this as you please to up to 10 or even 100 sources. You can also see the metadata associated with each chunk so that you can see which PDF was used. We only used one PDF for this demonstration, but um, it could summarize hundreds or even thousands of documents. So you can click that to get a preview into what that looks like. And then we'll just test a couple more queries here, asking it about what a transformer is, and you get another good response there. And we can do other things like generate tweets about the paper. All right, so everything looks like it's working in the test console. And now we'll go on to integrate this into our application. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is to get our model ARN. And we can just copy this command from the AWS documentation. And if you have the CLI configured, then you'll be able to just paste this and get information about all the foundational models. You can see that it also gives you this response streaming supported flag, which tells you if you are able to use the um, invoke response with streaming method, which gives you that chat GPT effect where you get the word by word response streamed back to your application. So I'm just gonna look for the Claude Sonnet model here. And I'm gonna grab this model ARN and I'll paste that into my environment file. The next thing that I need to do is ensure that my region name actually matches the one that I set previously. And it's the one that my model access was granted for. So in my case, it was US East one, but you can see there in the top that I have US West two in the ARN. So just make sure that that matches which is a common issue that I actually spent a lot of time on. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna need is our knowledge base ID. So we'll go back to our console and we'll go in on the left-hand side here and go to knowledge bases. And you should see the knowledge base that you created. And if it's not there, then make sure that your region matches. So we'll go to our knowledge base, we'll grab the ID and I'll paste that into my application as well. In our application, we're gonna be using the retrieve and generate method which allows us to query a knowledge base and generate a response using a single method. So if you're familiar with tools like Pinecone or Langchain, you have to query the knowledge base and then pass that response into an LLM in multiple steps. And so this was a really nice and handy method from AWS that allows you to do both of those in one step. So this is what the request syntax looks like, where the important parts are passing the model ARN, which we got in the last step, as well as passing the knowledge base ID down here. And so if we go back to our application, I've already set up a function for this where essentially we get the bedrock agent client using the Boto3 client, pass in the agent runtime with the same region name. You can ignore this um, basically like message filtering and grabbing the messages and turning that into a string. And then the main part that we need to configure is this knowledge base configuration where we pass the knowledge base ID, the model ARN, and then we can change the number of results here. So if you remember from the console, I think the default was five, but you can change this up until a hundred if you please. You can also set the prompt template here. So I've set it my text, temp, my text prompt template to, the, um, to this like helpful little string here where I've named my assistant HAL 9000, and then I've passed in the conversa conversation history from above. And then you have to use this special dollar sign, dollar sign flag so that you can pass the search results from the retrieve and generate API. And then you can create your rag prompt down here. The one common bug you might see is this 400 bedrock runtime error, where essentially the model that you chose is not one that you actually got access to. So just go back to your console and check that you actually got the model access in the same region that you requested. You should also note that the Claude Sonnet V2 model, which was released in October, I believe, I think it's only available in US East 1, which is why I actually used US East 1. Another quirk about using AWS Bedrock, especially for testing, is that you'll commonly get this throttling exception where if you call the API too many times, you might get this uh, error where you've requested too many times. So if you get this error, all you have to do is go to the AWS um, request for quotas page where you have to submit manually through a form to get your limit increased. 
there is a lot of demand for this right now, so it's not really sure how long it'll take to get your request approved. But if you go to the limit increase form here, you can fill out the exact reason and um, for why you need this service quota increase, and then you can submit that for AWS, AWS Bedrock specifically. All right, so I've just integrated a simple chatbot uh, interface here, and I just sent a first message asking it to uh, introduce itself. And it looks like our custom prompt here is working as it's referring to itself as HAL 9000. It already knows that it's been programmed to give responses on the paper, which is the transformer models. And this is just because we've set the retrieve and generate uh, method to be called every single time. So we're going to ask it to trans, uh, summarize the transformers paper and we'll see what we get here. So you can see that it's taking a couple of seconds because we haven't integrated the streaming method onto this. And actually the streaming method isn't supported on the retrieve and generate API. So if you do want to get that word by word uh, response, which really enhances the user uh, experience, then you'll have to do a custom method where you do the retrieve step first and then the generate step secondly using the invoke model with streaming response method from AWS. But as you can see here, it took a couple of seconds because the response was pretty big. I haven't formatted it at all yet, but you can see here that it gives a lot of uh, relevant information uh, based on our query. Another common bug you might see when creating your knowledge base is that you can't create it with a root user. So you'll need to create a new IAM user or role for this. And that'll allow you to create the open search vector database. So while that's all there is for today's video on knowledge bases, make sure to check out my other video where I cover using the Amazon Bedrock API to access the Claude Sonnet and Llama models. Additionally, if you're interested in building out your AI ideas, such as maybe a therapy chatbot that connects users to local therapists in their area, then make sure to check out the link in the description below where I work with clients to build out their AI ideas in the field of chatbots or retrieval augmented generation.